It's to Hatchpod time. Maya Acosta joined today by Greg Garrett and Chief Richard Standridge. So we are talking all things happening at the Tatchby Police Department. There's a lot going on, so we'll get into it. We've got a whole list here, but thank you both for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us, Maya. Of course. Not a problem. Great opportunity to come and uh, kind of give a three-quarter year update and kind of let folks know what's going on. When we talk about community policing and all the, the great things the Tatchby Police Department has going on, uh, it's it's a pleasure to be able to share that and have you with us today, Chief. Absolutely. Thanks, sir. Yeah, this is a great testament to how involved our police department is and how um, involved our officers are with the community. So exciting to get into it. So let's kind of look at this new program that we have that we're going to start kicking off with the um, stickers for individuals and their families with special needs. Chief, can you tell us a bit about that? I can. So as a parent of a child with special needs, you know, I've dealt with that since he was three years old. And through the course of that, I've met many parents and families and, and, you know, understand their struggles and issues they have. And one topic that continually comes up is how will my child interact with law enforcement? And I take that very seriously uh, because as I've stated to people time and time again, we represent all aspects of the community. And our special needs population here in Tatchby is no exception. Um, We have a rather large special needs population. So in my conversations with some of the local advocates, um, they asked me, you know, Chief, what can you do to help? And one of the things that I brought to the table here, and and we've finally been able to get it started, and I can't take credit for it, it's been kind of a a grassroots nationwide and statewide program, is we have a sticker that's based on our Tatchby Police Department patch, and they will be free to citizens with special needs children or adults in the home to the greater Tehachapi area, not just the city. I want to provide these to anyone in our community. And basically what it is can be put in the window car or it can be put in the window of their residence. So if we have contact with those family individuals, the sticker will make a reference to the fact that there's a person with special needs and may or may not understand communications clearly. And I think that's very important. Uh, We talk to our officers on a regular basis about interacting with our special needs community, but, you know, until they actually do it, sometimes it's just training and conversation where now when they may have interaction with these families could be an alarm call could be a suspicious person sometimes if if a new neighbor or somebody moves in doesn't understand that your special needs child goes outside and plays and and does certain things like my son will go out sometimes any kind of paces um so you know those are things that when we go to the residents will alert us to the fact of what we may be walking into so it gives us a little bit uh, more forethought to make sure that we handle things appropriately and uh, keep that in mind of the people in the residence yeah, and it's really all about safety. Yes. Yeah, what an amazing program because, you know, you guys train and train and train in all aspects of policing, community policing. But sometimes you're in a rush, right? You rush to a right. house because somebody called 911 and something's going on. And maybe the person that answers the door is a special needs person of any age. Correct. And, you know, the officers are, are looking towards, you've got to save somebody and the communication is not as great as it could be. But this gives you a heads up so you can, you can go in. It just really helps the whole package, you know, A to Z. It does. There have been, you know, too many incidences, you know, statewide in law enforcement dealing with special needs. And I think our profession as a whole has made great strides in including that community and getting the training to our officers, you know, to deal with that segment of our population. But if we can just start at Tehachapi with just this small aspect and, you know, have a great outcome from it, then we've, we've done a good thing. And, you know, we're actually looking at other opportunities to expand the programs with our local advocates, but in my conversations, and I got input from local folks here, you know, if they thought this would work here and I appreciated their input, you know, folks from the school district, Mm -hmm. from our local, um, you know, Kern, uh, regional and some of the staff that works with them and, and through our uh, community connections meetings and things like that, I've been able to meet people and solicit information. And we feel that this is where we need to start, but it's a continuing conversation, just like all aspects of service we provide to the community. So this is just a jumping off point. Right. So chief, you mentioned other agencies or you, you said it's available to the greater to Hatchby. So Tatchby police department, your people are going to be trained in this aspect. Tell yes. me, how is Stallion, Bear Valley, Kern County Sheriff, they're going to be uh, updated, taught, you know, how's that piece going to work? 
That I haven't uh, worked out all the details okay. there. Okay. But what I am going to do is let them know that I'm making these stickers available, and right. they may start seeing them in their okay their their jurisdiction and why we're providing those. Okay. Uh, initially, I was going to just provide them to citizens into Hatchapi, but that creates a whole other aspect of then we have to track whose address is whose and mm-hmm. and and you know i could come in and get one for my neighbor and give it so i think we just go ahead and make it available to the greater sure. tashby community and um, at that same time you know through our through our meetings we have with our local partners i think we can get that information out there and everybody be on the same page and as you mentioned it's a nationwide program yes. so everybody is coming on board so i'm yeah. great i'm grateful that you're leading this effort locally so again how do people obtain these stickers how wh- how would you go about that so they will start being available uh, Monday, which would be so Monday, September 23rd. They will start being available at the front desk of the Tatchby Police Department. I've ordered 200 mm-hmm. initially. I don't know what kind of you know response or, or demand we're going to get, mm-hmm. but they'll be available. They just need to come into the records department, let them know that they're a parent, caretaker, or family member of someone with special needs, and can they please have the sticker to place in their window. Mm-hmm. We will not ask any additional questions, and they will be provided one and uh, they can put it in their house. Perfect. I love the program. It's such a great moving forward. So Yeah, eventually I think we want to get to a program where someone can come in and provide us information in a confidential format to let us know about their family members. So if they go missing, run away, Mm -hmm. um, those type of things. So we have some um, uh, idea of, you know, lights, maybe a trigger, noise, those types of things. So we're working towards that. And this is where we're going to start. So you can load the database at dispatch, Correct. PD dispatch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's vital information. It's all about protecting that, that populace from, you know, uh, negative interactions or us accidentally not providing the best service possible. Yeah, for sure. Great program. Yeah, absolutely. So that is obviously ongoing project here right. um, through TPD, but we have some other timely things coming up here on the calendar. I think the closest um, that people should be keeping their eye out for is National Coffee with a Cop Day. That's on Wednesday, October 2nd. Chief, tell us a little bit more about that event. We've seen some good success in years past. Yeah, it's just an opportunity for us to get out there and, and meet the public in kind of a uh, you know less formal setting. We go and uh, to the McDonald's here in Tatchby, which is always busy. So it gives us a great opportunity to get in there and, and talk with members of the public who are just grabbing some coffee or breakfast on their way to work. We can, you know, have a minute or two conversation, exchange, you know, contact information or set up appointments to, to discuss issues further. And we pick that location. We don't get over there all the time. And there's a huge population of our veterans that mm-hmm. go there and, and different things. And they've asked me to come. Uh, on numerous occasions, which I do stop in periodically, not enough, but I do stop in periodically and, and going and meet with them. So on this particular day, we take that opportunity to go over there. And the owner of McDonald's, um, Marianne, Marianne is great. she's oh, fantastic. Big community supporter. Yeah. And, and you know, it's a huge supporter of the city, mm-hmm. the PD, mm-hmm. our parks and rec. She's just a fantastic mm-hmm. business owner. And yeah. this is our opportunity to go back and tell her thank you, utilize her business to have some positive contacts. And she welcomes us in and uh, we look forward to doing it like i said it, it that particular location allows us to hit a hit a group of uh citizens that are that are very uh, regular there and they like us to come in and well and the great talk thing about, about that group and i've been there many times that veteran group they'll tell you what's up correct they don't hold back they'll tell you <laughs> so if you really want to know what's up go talk to them that's why we go on yep. this particular right. day they <laughs> I mean it's awesome yeah they they tell us what we want to hear mm-hmm. good the bad and the ugly there you go Yep. And then I hear on October 3rd, you're going to be partnering with TVRPD with a bike rodeo. We are. It's going to be at West Park. Uh, we're going to have a, a bicycle course set up. The local bike shop that will be coming back online here in the next couple of months will be there helping teach uh, kids how to change a tire, how to adjust brakes, those types of things, doing a little bike maintenance uh, demo. We'll also, I, I believe they're going to be doing a little bike maintenance. We've also invited Highway Patrol. Uh, to come and take part. They're a very, very vital part of our community. And we work well with Maria Pagano and her folks out there. And we've asked them to come and partner with us. And they've agreed to be there. And we are going to be giving away bike helmets to the children that show up. So please bring your kids out, get a brand new certified safe bike helmet and uh, just come and hang out with your PD for a little bit. What are the t- what's the time frame on that? When does it start? It's going to be from four to six in the afternoon and the chief will have his mountain bike there and be riding. Oh. So if anybody <laughs> wants to come and ride around with the chief, I will be there. There you go. Awesome. Great event. I think 
it's been a little while since we've done one though. So it has. Exciting. And I really appreciate Corey Torres and his staff reaching out and kind of initiating this. Mm-hmm. Um, this was solely initiated by them and not because we didn't want to do it, but you know, this is a little more in their wheelhouse mm-hmm. uh, setting up and, and it's great. I, I look forward to more projects. He and I have talked about doing some additional things, you know, a summer camp and, and different things with the kids through the PD. And, and again, kind of like our special needs program, we have to jump off somewhere and this is where we pick to get going. And I appreciate him reaching out and getting yeah, this done. Sure. They're a great partner. Of ours. They are. Absolutely. And you know, Maya, Christmas yes. is less than a hundred days away. You would be counting Greg, Mr. Christmas. Well, did you already <laughs> buy my present? Yes, I did. Oh, nice. I can't wait. (laughs) (laughs) But in addition to Christmas, I mean, obviously, it's the season of giving, and TPD is bringing back Shop with the Cop. It's been a couple years since we've done that, and um, Chief is helping to spearhead that and get this great program back into our community. Yeah, I had a meeting with Walmart. Uh, They have a new manager, uh, Noel, and she's fantastic. So she and I had a meeting about a month ago. And we talked about this program specifically. Uh, She's a huge fan of it. And she asked that we bring it back. And so before I committed to yes or no, I met with the police foundation. This is kind of something they spearhead. And I also met with our local law enforcement partners and everybody wants to to get it back going. So shop with a cop will be December 5th at 6 p.m. We'll be at the PD and we'll be at Walmart by 7. And with the kids being allowed to shop and take pictures with Santa and, and have a great time. So one of the things we're trying new this year is in the past, the onus has always been put to the school district to help us find um, youth in the community that are in need. I want to change that and try something different. I want the information to be submitted to the police department and we'll have an email address up here in the next week or so that will go live so it can be submitted in a confidential format directly to me and uh, both you, Maya, and one other staff member here at the city that are working with me and coordinating and putting on this program so we can ensure that we're reaching the correct populace that needs this assistance. In my experience in the past with Shop with the Cop, children that are really, really in need and we're able to get to don't always shop for themselves. You'll see them buying things they need for family members. Um, I've seen dishes being bought. I've seen clothing being bought. I've seen food being bought. So we want to make sure we take our very best effort and pick the right kids for this program. So it will be an opportunity for the public to to submit it on through our email or they can submit it, uh, you know, through one of our social media opportunities and it'll just be a name an address and a phone number of the child and just a one line or two line sentence of why they think this child is in need. Give us an opportunity to vet and get those kids that really need this type of program. The foundation's on board with it. There's some other community members that have been assisting in, in gathering some funds uh, Department of Corrections out at the prison. Their staff is on board. California Highway Patrol, Kern County Sheriff's Department's participating. And we're looking forward to having a great event. We're going to choose uh, approximately 15 children. And depending upon the response we get from the public, but I would really encourage the public to give us those names. I, I think we will get a better a, a better turnout mm-hmm. of those that really need it by getting the, that information from the public. The schools have been fantastic, but you know what? They're busy educating and they have a lot of other things going on. And I want to try to, to put this on us. It's our program, so we should be responsible for I like finding the, the approach. children. So how would you donate to this effort? So if you want to donate to Shop with the Cop, uh, you can uh, come to the PD and make a cash donation or check. And you can donate it to the Tachapi Police Foundation. And we'll make sure that your donation is accepted and you will be uh, given the appropriate tax forms and things like that for you to, to deduct. So you can necessary. earmark, if you wrote a check, you, you can. can earmark that for a shop with the cop. Right? You can. I just Perfect. met with Kim Nixon today. Mm-hmm. And depending upon how this year goes, mm-hmm. we're talking about actually having a shop with a cop account all by itself because okay. the foundation does a lot of different donations. Mm-hmm. But we want to do this right. And if we do it right, it's going to be its own program that we will you know, gather a certain amount of funds for every year to keep it up and running. I know on my list, Maya, was uh, to promote the Tachibi Police Foundation. So it is a 501c3. It's a nonprofit. You mentioned Kim Nixon's name. She's the current president. There's a board of directors. You can, and I would highly encourage anyone listening to join the foundation or make a donation to the foundation because not only shop with the cop, but also assist the police department in purchasing different items that our, our police officers or police department might need 
to purchase to better do their jobs better. As well so. as our police explorer program now. Mm -hmm. So that's being run partially and funded by the, it's being run by the police department, but partially funded by the foundation. And that program has, is in its second week uh, up and running. We so have, you've restarted it. We have. Uh, that was done by Sergeant Adams and Lieutenant Rupert and Officer Aguilar. Mm -hmm. And they've done a fantastic job. Officer Kaiser is involved. Pretty much every officer in, in the police department is involved. So the first group of kids, we have six, are going through the four-week Explorer Academy right now. Every Saturday, they're meeting for half a day. They're doing PT. They're learning some military bearing. They're learning some police, uh, you know, penal codes, acronyms, all the things that, you know, cops use. And it, the, the kids are having a blast so far. We were able to get uniforms and some equipment. And we are currently in the process of interviewing some more kids to bring on into the program. When we started it, we had initial response from parents. Now the response is starting to get overwhelming, which I think is fantastic. So good problem to have. It is. It is absolutely. So I think as, as we move forward and we're able to get the kids out and start doing community service back. So, which is why hopefully folks see the need to donate to this program so we can keep it going because as the kids get uh, more trained and they become more comfortable in the position, they will be giving back to the community as well. And so if you donated uh, to the foundation, you could earmark it for the, fa for the explore program Correct. also. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. So men and women, young men and women of this community, Maya couldn't be more proud and for them to at a young age, what is the minimum age that you can join? About 14, 14. right now is where we want to start. Okay. And uh, for those individuals to be able to want to, you know, participate, and I've said this many, many times, Tehachapi is not playing the games that are being played across this great nation when it comes to policing. We've never bought into it, and we're solid, and we will continue to be the safest city in Kern County. That's a fact, and uh, this, and they are supervised. So for parents that may be on the fence of, oh, you know, I don't want to put my 14 mm -hmm. or 15-year-old there, they That's are supervised point. by staff. Good point. So we have a supervisor and uh, anywhere between two and three officers with that group at any given time. So the parents can, uh, you know, feel comfortable in the fact that their kids have, sh have <laughs> supervision. Now, will the uh, explorers be playing pickleball with the chief or is pickleball with the chief open to the public? How's that going to work? Well, pickleball with the chiefs open to the public. So <laughs> uh -huh. um, that's coming up. I think we just decided to do that October, 10th. October 10th. Yeah. Start at five to seven at the Tatchby Police Department, just like we did last year. I welcome the public to to come and attend. I've had an injury lately, so I've been a little laid up on the shelf. But you know, I might have to, um, you know, push uh, through it. Yeah, Take yeah. some Advil. Might have to come out of retirement <laughs> for a little bit to, you know, play with the kids or uh, if one of them wants to challenge. But yeah, uh, the pickleball has been fantastic at the police department, both from a public standpoint and from a youth standpoint. We see young kids out there playing all the time. And it's been really good. And I think that's kind of segued into, I think, why our Explorer program is going to be so successful because they get to interact with, you know, the officers at any given moment. It's great, uh, positive interaction. You know, I, after city council on Monday, Maya, I came out and the, all four courts were filled. Yep. It was crazy. And then yeah. Tuesday we had, you hosted the, you and Key and, and Jessica hosted uh, the, uh, the Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, hometown Christmas, one at noon and one at six. And after the meeting about 7.15 or so. Packed packed <laughs> you know standing room only and i'm like wow what a what a grand slam yeah. what a grand slam especially the location it's in the parking lot of the police department there has been more than one occasion when the chief shows up to play and he can't get on court <laughs> so hey great problem to have that means the public feels comfortable coming to use their facilities that are being provided for them and i couldn't be more excited i wind up standing around talking and getting to know people and you know what that's as good as playing yeah there you go and uh, we're talking about future officers, but what about current staffing and some additional officers? How's that going? Our staffing is looking good. Uh, we have two in the academy right now, and they're doing fantastic. So we hope to get them out in the next couple of months, three months, I believe, uh, to get them graduated and on the streets. And we currently hired two laterals. Uh, one came to us from California City and the other one from Bakersfield PD, mm -hmm. both local and they love this community and that was the big uh, endearing factor in drawing them here and we look forward to see what they're going to do in their career for sure we'll be uh, swearing both of those in at the next council meeting so the public will get an opportunity to see who they are and meet them at that time great city to work for i have to say yeah a lot <laughs> of things going on 
Exactly. And you know, a lot of things, it's great when we can come in here and talk about this and not everything would be crime related. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Crime does happen, but it's our job to minimize it. And if you commit a crime, then you're going to pay the price. Correct. Period. Speaking of minimizing potential crime, but we have a new speed monitoring. Um, Can you talk more about that? We do. We purchased a uh, speed trailer. And it will track speed in the city of Tachapi. And, it, you know, you've seen them everywhere. It has the red and blue lights to tell you to slow down. And it's also a message board. And it will start being deployed next week. And it will be deployed daily at different sections in town where either citizens have voiced enough concern about traffic in that area or we have dealt with or observed traffic issues in that area. We'll probably start in the school zones would be my ultimate guess, but I leave that up to my, you know, day shift sergeants because they have that hands-on information. The one thing I do want to let the public know is we are training our officers in the use of LIDAR. I have purchased a LIDAR for the department <clears throat> to start issuing speeding citations, and we have been issuing them in the school zones. So I encourage everybody to abide by the law and slow down. The, the amount of time that you rush through the school zone to get through traffic only to get stuck in traffic is not worth the potential injury you can cause by not adhering to the law. I feel like in the last couple of years, for whatever reason, chief, um, people tend to speed more and people tend to roll through stop signs. And I know uh, city council members have been, you know, hit up by community citizens. A couple of people have come to city council meetings and um, you know, we don't want to give people tickets. But certainly if you're speeding through a neighborhood or you're speeding through a, a school zone or if you don't stop for a stop sign, man, we just don't want you to regret it, right? It, you know, the worst could happen and it has happened in other cities and even here, I'm sure. But we just want to make sure that people drive safe. And that's all we ask. Um, there's nowhere in this town that you need to be in that big of a hurry to get to that you can't get to, you know, within five minutes. And so... What we're seeing a lot of is um, not even a stop and go. I would say it's a slow and go. You know, it used to be the California stop was you just kind of came to a slow roll, brake lights came on. They're not even coming on anymore. They're just going directly through, you know, the stop signs. And, And we are writing those citations and they're rather large. And so I hope we can start doing a lot more education and counseling about driving habits than we are issuing citations. If I didn't have to issue any citations, it would be fantastic. Yeah, we don't want people's money. We really sincerely do <clears throat> not. Yeah, one issue we're dealing with that's huge, and, and it's a pet peeve of mine, and mostly because of the damage it does, and also you know, I get the complaints from the public, is um, the sideshow. We've had a few of that recently. You'll see the marks in the road at Alder and Curry. You'll see some in front of West Park. So you're talking about the guy spinning out, doing you know, 360s yes. and leaving tire marks on yes. the asphalt. Okay. They're, they're destroying our intersections. That makes our city look unruly. It makes our city look uh, less than desirable. And that's not who we are. And that's not the image we want to project. We're doing our very best to catch those individuals. Um, that is an arrestable offense if you are caught um, that is a 30-day impound of your vehicle mm-hmm. and depending upon any modifications you've made to that vehicle may ultimately result us in contacting the state and turning your information over to them before you can get your vehicle out i can guarantee you they do not know that i've seen the same thing in the mm-hmm. county of mm-hmm. golden hills and different areas mm-hmm. so there's somebody out there or a couple people out there doing that and they will be caught at some point. They will. And I'm encouraging citizens to please report that. You can report it anonymously. I don't need your name and number. I just need you to point us in the right direction and we will be more than happy to take care of that. Hmm. I think that's a common thing that we see a lot, especially, you know, with the rise of social media is you'll get on Facebook and on those rants and raves pages or any of those public forums and you'll see people report crimes that could be an arrestable offense or something that our officers could take care of, um, but they're not actually reporting it to the police. They just post the comment on Facebook Correct. and uh, it doesn't really go anywhere. So what is your thoughts on that? I, I encourage people to report to us. We, we want the calls. I want the emails. If you don't want to report email, um, our sector program that I've been talking about for the last few months is going to go live here uh, real shortly. Uh, we're doing, we need to do some things to the website to get it out there and get it accurate. And you know, when you're doing those kinds of updates, it takes time and our staffing is where it needs to be now. So we're ready to go. I encourage people to report it. We, we will take anonymous complaints. I, I rarely look at the social media comments, but somebody pointed me 
to one the other day in relation to this incident, which you call sideshow and, you know, spinning the donuts in the intersections. So I went on and read it and I actually reached out to a citizen through that forum and got information I needed in relation to a different case. Mm -hmm. So I don't do that all the time, but occasionally I will. And so rather than me have to track you down like that to get that information, why don't you just call us Mm -hmm. and we'd be, we'd be more than happy to take care of it. And for some reason you're not satisfied with the service. Let me know. Mm -hmm. 822 Two, 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 two. That's it. Or if it's an emergency, 911. Always. You work really well, Chief, with our partners, California Highway Patrol, Kern County Sheriff, Stallion Springs PD, Bear Valley PD, and others. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, you know, bringing bringing those people together and those leaders and collaborating to make Tehachapi as a whole a better place. Yeah, we recently uh, talked about, we just had the Kern County Uh, chiefs conference. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came out of it is there is a large group of police chiefs and CHP commander in the Eastern Kern County. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that came from it is we are going to start an Eastern Kern chiefs meeting. It'll probably be quarterly, but we're going to start getting those folks together and going over issues that impact all of us in Eastern Kern. It's good to know each other, to respect each other and to share ideas, Yep, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, a lot of good things happening. No reason to reinvent the wheel. No, a lot of good things happening. Very good. It's been great, Maya. So much things happening um, all throughout the city and throughout TPD as well. So really exciting to see. I know kind of once the new year starts uh, again, we will bring Coffee with the Cop back. Mm -hmm. Coffee with the Chief, I should say, that we held two times at Mountain Coffee House uh, within the past couple months. So we're looking forward to that. But again, October 2nd, if you want to talk to Chief and our other officers, it's a great way to do that at McDonald's, 7 to 9. Yeah, it's been a while since I did a podcast. And in closing, uh, if I can just tell the public, thank you. Thank you for the great year plus that I've had and the welcoming in the community from my family and I. And I look forward to continuing to serve and uh, keeping the crime out of the community for you and getting our folks uh, the best training possible and taking care of our citizens. Keep up the good work. Thanks, yes, sir. We appreciate it. Greg, anything else? I think I'm good. Thank you, Chief. Thank yes. you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Chief. All right. Anybody listening, if you have any sort of questions or comments, you can email us media at com. We can get that to Chief or whoever that question may be for. And as always, thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you back here next time on Tehachapi. Pod.